Committee. As I said, welcome to our hot morning. Our hot new minister coming back a little slimmer and a, wow, in a wonderful suit. Yes, he's a little slimmer. <laughs> so, let me welcome the hot Reverend John. <laughs> Reverend Anne, you know, ready for me and say, you know. <laughs> and a wonderful good morning, family. Reverend Emma used to have a lovely greeting. She used to say, greetings and salutations. And the response was, infinite love and expressions of joy. Can we do that? Yes. Greetings and salutations. Infinite love and expressions of joy. Wow. And that's what you look like to me this morning. You look like infinite love and expressions of joy. I also send infinite love and expressions of joy to everyone who is listening to this encouragement on the World Wide Web. Welcome, welcome, welcome. It's a joy for me, for me to be back at play. During my vacation, I decided that I so love serving as a minister, and more specifically, serving as your minister, that it really is a misnomer to call it work. So I'm telling everybody I am back at play. And that's what I have set as my life's purpose, added to my life's purpose, my mission, my personal mission statement. It is to, to scatter joy and to play and have fun every single day of my life. Wouldn't that, wouldn't that a lovely mission to have? Yes. If you agree, say yes. yes. Wow. Yes. And this idea of joy brings to me the idea of rejoicing. And so I want us to rejoice together this morning. Remember, remember that wonderful chorus, Rejoice in the Lord? Yes. Rejoice in the Lord always and again I say rejoice. Rejoice in the Lord always and again I say rejoice. Rejoice, rejoice and again I say rejoice. Rejoice, rejoice and again I say rejoice. This time start. Rejoice in the Lord always and again I say rejoice. Rejoice in the Lord always and again I say rejoice. This time start. My friends, Dr. Ernest Holmes, who gave the world this transformative teaching known as the science of mind, said, and I quote, we have a song to sing. Is that so true? And we have a joy, a joy to bring to the world, and love, and peace, and happiness, unquote. But you know, friends, you can't serve others from an empty vessel. And so I took time on my vacation to recharge and refill, giving myself the gift of seven days of silence, no TV or radio, no telephone or WhatsApp. So if you try to get me and got no response, don't vex, you, know now, you now know why. I also studied and practiced some basic uh, techniques of energy medicine from a wonderful book um, of the same name by a woman called Donna Eden, lent me by Maestro Dexter, just wonderful, which has a lot of exercises on how to generate more joy from the depths of your being and how to improve your health and vitality. So joy is very much, has been very much my focus. And while on vacation, I also represented you at the Universal Foundation for Better Living's Panorama of Truth at the Hyatt Ziva. Hotel in Montego Bay, and I have to tell you, the Hyatt Ziva is one lovely hotel. The food is fantastic. The staff go out of their way to help you, and they have a 24-hour ice cream shop. Lord. <laughs> mm. 
with slabs of dark chocolate just sitting in, in open bowls and their little bar stools and you can just sit in there and be joyous. <laughs> so I now know that gr saying grace before you eat anything really works because I blessed every cone and there were many. When uh, Reverend Dr. Sheila McKeithen, who is, is the president of uh, UFBL and also, of course, as you know, senior minister of the Universal Center of, of Truth for Better Living here in Jamaica, when she asked me to be on the panel, she said, you know, John, I, I really am concerned um, about the fact that many people have the impression that we people in New Thought only are concerned with our own welfare and our own getting better and, and richer and, and more prosperous. And we have talked about that too, haven't we, among ourselves, that sometimes we're accused of being selfish, you know, because Ernest Holmes did say the work is within and upon the self. He didn't say it to the exclusion of, of your compassion for humanity, though, and for helping others. So she wanted to have a panel at this Panorama of Truth, this big conference, uh, in which various New Thought churches would, sh would share what we do outside the, the four walls of our churches uh, in, in the area of social interaction. So we had uh, a wonderful woman um, whose name is Vale, V-A-I-L-L-E, -L -L -E, and um, I thought it was Viale, and she said, no, it's Vale, like, you know, the Vale of the temple. And she is a 23-year recovered, or recovering, I told her I think she's recovered, um, addict, and she opens houses for for women who are recovering as well um, in Baltimore. And then there was the, the current minister at the UFBL church in um, Chicago that was started by Mary Tomkin. And, and he's very involved with uh, social activism, you know, joining protests uh, uh, and marches for human rights. And there was a wonderful and very beautiful lawyer who um, looks at discrimination against women in the workplace. So there was this whole spectrum of, of wonderful um, social activities being spoken. And of course, there was me, and I was talking about our work in the prison. Um, prisons, because we're not, we now are, are in the women's prison as well, the correctional services. So our presentation was titled, A Call for Love, Action in Our Communities. A Call for Love. And so I began by sharing that we were invited by Mr. George Young, who actually um, attends, is a member of our church. Uh, George is, uh, was at the time a member of Stand Up For Jamaica, a non-government organization doing excellent work in the prisons. And he invited me to write a proposal for a program which addressed behavioral change and personal growth. And I was telling the audience, which were largely American, of course, uh, there, were, there were quite a few people from the, uh, the local center here, but uh, there were a lot of people from abroad. And I was telling them if they know anybody who um, is from Jamaica, they'll know that I couldn't put in our proposal the word science of mind, because in Jamaica, science has a different connotation. <laughs> you know, we talk about high science, meaning obia or necromancy or black magic, so they were tickled pink, you know? So, um, and I told them the story, and this is a true story, that every time we start a, a new cohort, Reverend Michael Record and myself, I promise them, I promise the group, that I'll be there on a Tuesday at 1 o'clock at reception to be processed, barring any national disaster like a hurricane, or if I happen to be um, on a slab somewhere you know, at Madden's. So you must be careful what you promise. So. One Tuesday I arrived, as usual, and um, the people at the front, the front desk at the, at the prison said, sorry Rev, but no class today, the, office, the correctional officers are on industrial action, and so the prisons are on lockdown. So I said, okay, just tell the guys to me that I was here, knowing full well, of course, that nobody was going to tell anybody anything, you know, it doesn't, the system doesn't work that way. Um, but, you know, and I'll be here next week. So. End of story part one. Story part two, next Tuesday, I presented myself as usual. And as we sat down in the class, one of them said, hey, Rev, think you did say only a hurricane or your own death would prevent you from coming. Which one was the problem last week? 
And before I could answer him, another member of the class said, him was here. So I said, how the hell you know I was here? I, I cursed madly to let them know I'm human. So I said, how the hell you know I was here? You, one of the officers told you, he said no. I said, well, you can, you can see me from, from your cell at, uh, in the North Block. He said, no. He said, I always know when you come on this, on this premises because the energy changes. I thought, what an interesting comment to come from this young man, you know. So I said, energy, that's an interesting word. What does this energy feel like or look like or, you know? What is this energy? And he sat for the longest while, I think, trying to find words to express what he was saying. And after what seemed like a long time, he pointed at me and he said, it feels like love. Wow. A call to love. So that's how my whole presentation began. And of course, they were very engaged. And at the end of the, all of the presentations of all of the ministers, I was third, and there were five of us. And there was a question and answer period. And we had, I fielded many questions, but two that really stood out for me were, one was somebody asked, what prompted or inspired us to, to go into, into that form of, of, of ministry? And so I, it just came to me out of nowhere because um, sometimes when you're faced with an answer, and I just said, you know, I'm reminded of the wonderful parable Jesus gave of the lost sheep. You know that wonderful story of the shepherd who left the 99 that he had and went to search for the one? You heard a pin drop in the place. And then um, I said, Matthew 18, I thought, Jesus, I hope that's right. <laughs> Anyway, if you want to find people who, who maybe feel lost or disconnected or people who may have forgotten who they are and where they come from and the truth of their being, that's a good place to start, eh? Um, and part of the, the issue was they were, Sheila McKeithen was saying, and you know, if you can give people something to do, you know, which is right up my street, an assignment. But you can hardly give an assignment to, to go visit the prison because it's very difficult to get permission to even get in there. Um, so my assignment to them was, if in their various communities abroad they are able to get into the prisons easily, please do and go visit. But the other thing to do is, if you know of any people who, are, who have been released and who are ex- um, prisoners and you have an opportunity to offer them employment um, because that's a really big challenge eh? when they come out please offer provide opportunities for employment for people who have been through that experience the other question that that you know I, um, I I've been contemplating and Reverend Macklin and I have have talked about it a lot is how these men manage to maintain this consciousness of joy. They seem to be able to, in the face of unbelievable deprivation and hardship and squalor and, and you know, just unbelievable circumstances, find it in themselves to be happy where they are and to, to be able to focus on the training that we're offering and also just to be joyous right where they are. Not, you know, sometimes I think we, you know, we, we're here and we are annoyed or bored or you know, um, dissatisfied with our lives. You need, I really wish you could see what life is like behind bars. But there was a reason, and the, the main reason for my going to the panorama of truth, and it came when I left the stage. I thought to myself, you know, this experience um, really needs to be documented. And so I went back to my room and I wrote the outline and the chapter headings for my first book. And it's going to be titled, After a Sign That Greets You As You Are Leaving the Prison, over one of the gateways, it says, none shall escape. <laughs> Ain't that true? 
None of us. So I hope in another year, how long did it take you? You set yourself a year and it took you three? Pray with me, yes. I hope by next year, this time, I, I will be um, able to be sharing with you that wonderful experience um, of our work in the prison. This quality of joy that I've been thinking a lot about when I was on leave. The Oxford Dictionary defines joy as a vivid emotion of pleasure or gladness, a thing that causes delight, unquote. But that definition seems to me to more aptly describe momentary pleasure caused by someone or something. And the joy I am talking about is a natural inner state of being. And yet, my friends, so many people lose sight of the concept of pure joy and settle for a lesser form of happiness, don't we? Too many of us live out our days in fear of what will happen next or in regret for what has already happened, thereby enabling fear to rob us of the divine joy that is really our true birthright. And so I want to ask you this morning, are you able, most of the time at least, to let go of the everyday concerns that so easily take priority over the joy in your soul? It's not easy, you know, and then when I'm in a nice centered place, I get a WhatsApp that tells me, if anybody throws eggs at my windshield, don't wipe it with the water because it forms an emulsion and makes you, so they can hold you up and rob you. If you love me, don't send me those warnings. I don't need them, you know. And a lot of them come from abroad anyhow, it not happen here. So, um, but in any event, I don't want to fill my consciousness with, with warnings of dire, you know, uh, detailed pictures of people who, who alter the ABM machine. Um, to steal your money. I know it happens, friends, but I, if you love me, don't send it to me. <laughs> so you see, during my vacation and my period of silence, I never watched television, I never turned on the radio, I never answered my phone, I never watched app, and I was just in this wonderful place. And every morning I began a practice to declare today a day of joy. Can you imagine if you woke up every morning and you just named the day joy? I name today joy, and then ask yourself, what would bring me the most joy today? What would bring me the most joy today? This is lovely because if you have to go to work tomorrow and tomorrow morning, you ask yourself, it's a go to, go to hell show for fish and bammy. You now have a decision to make. <laughs> but I found that just by answering the question for myself, even if I couldn't accomplish it that day, just saying to myself, what would bring me the most joy today? And journaling about that took my soul to a place that centered me. So that yes, I, I, you know, what would bring me the most joy today is to go on a world cruise. That's not going to happen right now. But, but not today. You know, it, one has to make bookings and get some clothes made. You know me. So uh, <laughs> there has to be planning. But just focusing on what would really make today a joyful day for you? And living from that, that consciousness is just an amazing way to begin your day. So practice joy. It's going to be your assignment. And you know, when I went back to watching television, I only watched, I'm a serial watcher of, I have become a serial watcher of game shows. And the, Reruns of The Nanny and Sex in the City. Love it. So. Yes. Uh, so you see, this irrepressible joy, you can see it if you watch children. You ever watch children? They have this just joy at discovery. If you give yourself a part of your assignment, the, the, the blessing of just watching a child discover the world and discover life. And if you can just resist, um, uh, curb your, your tendency to want to say, no, 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 don't touch that. You know, I have a coffee table covered with little boxes, silver boxes and crystal boxes, and um, the children in the neighborhood find them fascinating. Of course. And I have little treasures in them too, little words, you know, love, when you open one it says love and you know, all of that. So the children love to come and they can we play with the box with? And the mothers invariably say, no! And I'm saying, how are they to discover? The love of beautiful things and an in a curiosity about life if you don't allow them to touch and to enjoy. But I've come a long way, I used to say no to. 
I used to say to the parents, this is not a child-friendly house. <laughs> but I healed that. I healed that. You know, the story is told of a little girl who, from humble circumstances, and on her way home, she, f she saw something shining on the sidewalk, and she picked it up. And it was a broken neck chain, you know, a necklace. And she held it up to the light, and it glittered in the sunlight. And so she took it home to her harassed and overwrought mother and said, Mommy, this reminds me of your smile. And you, you can imagine a harassed mother who don't even know how to make it's five of them and she only have enough flour to make four dumplings. And just that gesture of love and joy from a little girl transformed her whole mental atmosphere and her own, own mental ment mindset and in fact would have brought her considerable joy. You know, have you noticed then how feelings can be catching? You ever go somewhere to visit and you don't know, but there might have been a quarrel in the family before you got there. And when you get there, you just don't, you don't know about that, but you just don't feel comfortable. And they say, have some lemonade. And you say, no, I'm not stopping. <laughs> I, I'm not stopping. I just brought you that this period. It's, there's an energy. The, 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 the young man at the general penitentiary said, there's an energy that surrounds us, a, a force field that, that emanates sometimes for many, many miles around us. And if you, if you are tuned into it, you can get that feeling when you're in the presence of, of some people. I used to just, if I felt agitated, just come and, and say, Reverend Emma, can I sit with you for two minutes? Yes, dear. She exuded this, this deep calm that just overtook me whenever I was in her presence. And it didn't always work like the Sunday morning I gave the man the finger when I was driving her to church. But, but usually, usually, usually. So I have a friend, I'll call him um, Chris. And, and Chris, this is a true story. Chris had been passed over for a promotion. And he was, can I say Chris was pissed? Is that, does that rhyme? Anyway, he was very angry. And he was about to storm into his boss's office and let fly. Uh, before he got up from his desk, his phone rang, and it was his 14-year-old son, excited. He said, Daddy, Daddy, guess what? Um, Cindy had seven puppies. And that was their, their dog at home. And I did everything you said I should do, and the, 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 the delivery was perfect. This little boy wants to be a veterinarian um, eventually, and he was just overjoyed at an awed and, and just beside himself with joy at the delivery of these puppies. And of course, feelings are contagious. That just turned Chris's feelings, and he said, boy, daddy, you're the best instructor. You want to come to veterinary school with me? You know, and um, so by the time he had hung up and said, son, that's great. I'll be home to have a look at the pups in, uh, as soon as I can. The boss came out of the office, and he had so forgotten the fact that he was not amused with said boss that he just gleefully and joyfully shared the story of how his son had, de had safely delivered seven new, new puppies. And in the course of conversation, his boss revealed to him that he had been passed up for promotion because something bigger and better, he had been earmarked for something bigger and better in the company. Now, you know, if you had, if you had done a John and go in there and tell him, two, Christian Badwood, you know? Why the L class is meant to spin and get the work? That would have been the end of that, eh? So what, what, and in fact, he left early and went home and to con congratulate the budding, the budding veterinarian, and what might have been an angry and angst-filled and unpleasant day turned out to be a joyful experience and exchange of energy between human beings. One of my favorite authors, Baron Katie, in a book um, titled A Thousand Names for Joy, suggests that when we are sad, it is because we are feeling separated from God. And she says, I, I quote, she writes, sadness is the war with what is. Isn't that so true? 
Sometimes there's nothing you can do about something and you're there and yamming up yourself, as we say in Jamaica. Sadness is the war with what is. And she says you can experience it only when you are arguing with God. Look how my prayer, my friend, still dead. What kind of God are you? We're in an argument with, with the infinite and it's going to bring you feelings of separation. And now it's human and that sadness is human. But if you are, have that inner core of joy, then you can return to it very, very quickly and just recenter yourselves and reclaim the joy that is yours. So you can just say to yourself, I reclaim my joy now. Can we say that? I reclaim my joy now. Joy is my inheritance. Joy is my, joy is my way of life. I am joy incarnate. And so friends, I really believe if everyone took the time to, to do this, to rediscover their naturally joyous state of being, we could create what they have now, zones of operation. We could create a joy zone of operation, which will transform our country and indeed the entire world. We must do this, this, this reaching for joy and this scattering of joy where, wherever we go until we create a force field of joy that surrounds each of us. Believe me, my friends, from that state of mind, we can rid Jamaica and the world of many adverse attitudes. And you know what? My heart tells me that this is a time for gathering together in the solidarity of joy in order to alter our present reality. We've been studying the science of mind for a long time and I'm, I'm getting the feeling that the science of mind is, is morphing into the science of heart. That, you know, you know, we talk about the mind of our hearts too. Your mind has a, its, own, its own heart, which is why Jesus says, I will write my law on their hearts. Because this is where it happens, you know. It doesn't happen, you know, in what we think. It happens in how we feel and how we relate, how we pass that joy from heart to heart and from home to home and from village to village and from community to community until the whole earth is filled with the beauty of God's joy. And I think it's happening right here at our center. I'm seeing it and I'm feeling it. There is already a movement in this direction. Our thriving ministry initiative, which we began in July with a wonderful, I changed it from a workshop to play shop, with a wonderful play shop, um, has started this kind of, this energy of how can we be involved in this wonderful ministry of joy and truth. Now we were, most of us, on holiday for August, but we are back in, as they say, in the saddle, and we are going to be pulling together all that data that we generated at that wonderful play shop, and we will be in touch with you uh, very shortly about the next steps and how we are going to take this forward and include even more people um, in, this, in this wonderful ministry of light and life and truth. So stay tuned for more information um, in the very near future. The beautiful Jesus gives us a wonderful be attitude to live by in Matthew 5 verse 9. He said, blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. And the peacemakers spoken of in this beatitude are those who find the joyous serenity in their own souls. And this condition of mind is the objective of which Jesus aims all of his, all of his, his messages. You know, he says, my peace I leave with you. You know, he's, he's always saying, you can be centered in that place which, which reminds you that you are a child. You are a, a a creation of something so awesome and so beautiful and so, so total, total in, its, in its love that if you could just grasp that even, even in the tiniest amount, you could move mountains and live from the mountain top of your own joy. So I want to do two things. I want to encourage you to, to join our labyrinth walk on Wednesday at 5.30.
And I want to also invite you to come and sit with us in silence at the celebration of prayer power, its 16th birthday on Thursday at 6 o'clock. And I also want to say, if you are not already a meditator, some of us have learned to meditate, but we don't do it all that often. If you are a meditator already, resume your meditation practice. Give yourself that gift. It will center you in joy. And if you aren't yet a meditator, I encourage you to, to really give yourself that gift. It will work wonders in your life. Just call the office. We're very happy to, to teach you. And it is a wonderful way to generate and maintain the inner joy, which is your true birthright. Holmes said, everything necessary to the full and complete expression of the most boundless experience of joy is mine now. I'm going to repeat it and you say it with me. Everything necessary, everything necessary to the full and complete expression of the most boundless experience of joy is mine now. And another poet said, when you finally allow yourself to trust joy and embrace it, you will find you dance with everything. And so my friend, my prayer for you is that the joy of God's presence within you will bless, enrich, and noble your dance with life. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again I say, rejoice. Namaste.